Harvest Moon Story of Seasons Cow, Episode 2. We're going to start with texturing. Texturing is possibly the best. I love it. Let's make some materials. Switch to the image editor. Blender's node system is incredibly powerful, and you can make pretty much anything you can imagine with it. Usually, it takes some trial and error, but there's almost always a way to achieve what you want to. Shift A to add a noise node to the default material. Connect the color output to the shader base color. And now you have a beautiful rainbow cow. Add a vector, mapping, and an input texture coordinate node. There are mods that speed up this process, but we'll do it manually for now. Connect the object to the vector and the vector to the vector. <laughs> Each node has a bunch of adjustable parameters. Add a mix node. Drop it in between these two nodes and change the color output to the factor. You could use the factor output as well, either works. Choose two colors. Add a color ramp. Move the two sliders close together. Change the noise texture scale. Drop the detail level on the noise node. And move the color ramp up until you get a good mix of the two colors. You can use the location values on the mapping node to slide the texture around until you like the look of it. Or you can change any parameter until it looks good to you. Using constant on the color ramp can help if you don't want any blending of the colors. I want the mouth to be a different color. An easy way to select the mouth is by going into vertex select, alt selecting the edge between the head and mouth, you might have to select multiple times, and hitting ctrl E to mark it as a seam. Switch to face select, select a face on the mouth, hit ctrl L, add a new material slot, and a new material. Change the color to whatever you want, and in edit mode, click assign. I want a pinkish peach tone. I'm also going to assign it to the udder. Add a new material slot, and material. Make it whatever color you want the hooves and horns to be. Select these faces and assign. Make a material for the eyes. I'll select this edge loop and mark it as a seam with Ctrl E. Assign your primary cow color to the ears and the mouth color to the inner ears. Whatever faces you have selected will change to the material when you hit assign. Marking seams with Ctrl E can help you select groups of faces. Use the hoof color for the horns, cow skin to the tail, select the bell, get a light orange red color, change the metal slider to 1, add this copper material to the other bell parts. As cute as this is, we can make it even better. Add an ambient occlusion node and a color ramp. Sample the peach color to replace the white color, connect everything up. Don't worry about these ugly shaded edges. This is known as the terminator problem. There's a bunch of ways to get around it, and in 2.9, Blender added an option under the object tab to manually fix it as well. I'm just going to use better lighting to get rid of it. Slide these two handles very close to this end of the color ramp. And adjust this color, I used a light brown, and made the peach color more peach. On this specific model, enabling local only will work, which means an object with this material will only gather ambient occlusion from itself. Also, you can see that the weird shading thing is really only an issue in Cycles, and not so much in Eevee, it's a ray tracing thing. Let's make a better light. Delete this light, add a plane, position and rotate it, also scale. Make a new material, call it light or something, switch to transparent. Shift A, add a mix shader and an emission shader. This factor slider changes the plane from transparent to a light. Increase the strength of the emission shader. Add a gradient texture, connect it to the factor, and change it to spherical. Add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. Object to vector and vector to vector. Under visibility, uncheck camera. Now we have an invisible light for our cow. You can change the position or adjust whatever you want on it. Under the world properties tab, click this yellow dot and choose environment. Select open and navigate to where you're going to save your free HDRA textures from HDRA Haven. Link in the description. Everything is 100% free on their site, and very high quality, I highly recommend it. Also, did I mention it's free? I'm going to use one that looks like a good place for a cow. In perspective view, you can see the HDRI in your viewport. The HDRI will show up in the renders and viewport, unless in the render properties, you enable transparent in the film category. Let's add some ambient occlusion to the other materials. Copy the mix node with Shift D and change it to a multiply node. 
Also, copy the color ramp. Connect it up like so. I prefer linear for ambient occlusion. And a lighter brown will work. You can make any of this whatever color you'd like. I think pink looks good. Strawberry milk cows are the best. For some reason, whenever you have a group of the exact shaped thing, but they're all different colors, it makes me happy on the inside. Let's add some ambient occlusion to the horns too. Maybe make it slightly purple. And that looks good to me. So let's unwrap our model so that we can bake these colors to a texture. Select edges, control E, mark seam, add seams wherever you want while attempting to limit stretching. Select the faces and hit U to choose unwrap. And brings up this side panel. Under view, overlays, check stretching. Looks good. Continue marking seams on all the objects and unwrapping them to preview the stretching. I don't like the ear shape entirely, so I flattened out this vertex. Select everything and hit U to unwrap to one UV map. Body, udders, tail, ears, horn, eyes. Change the margin to 0.01 to give the islands more space. Apply the mirror modifier on the eyes since the texture won't be mirrored. We should also mark this edge down the middle of the body as a seam with Ctrl E, and then apply the mirror modifier to the body object. If I don't add a seam, you can see the stretching starts to get a little worse. We want these to be a more dark blue. This is still acceptable, but we can do better. So mark a seam down the center. Much better! The ears also need the mirror modifier applied. One thing we might want to do is get the mouth to have a mirrored UV so that it's easier to draw the nose on even. With face select, select the face on the mouth and hit Ctrl L. Select both sides. Hit P and separate by selection. In front view, delete half of the mouth, select vertices. Add a mirror modifier. Now select the udder, body, mouth, eyes, ears, horns, and tail tab into edit mode. Hit U to unwrap. You can see all this empty space. You could try to reposition things to get every object as much resolution as possible, but it's okay as is. You can also unwrap the bell and throw it in here if you want to. I scaled down the backside of the eyes, and that looks good as a final unwrap. These lighting aberrations will show up on our model's bake if we don't fix them. Before we fix it, let's get the mouth back as part of the body object. Apply the mirror modifier on the mouth, shift select the body, join them together with Ctrl J. This will make our body back into one object. Select all and merge by distance with M, add a subdivision modifier, and that looks better. Here's the bake menu. Change to diffuse and only select color. Go into the shader editor and add an image texture node to the cow skin material. Create a new material of whatever dimensions you choose. I chose 2048 by 2048 and name it Cow Texture 2, since my first time doing this didn't record. <laughs> Select this node and hit Ctrl C to copy it. Go to your other materials and paste it with Ctrl V. Paste it in the eye material, the skin, hooves, and pinkish material as well. Select all of your objects, go into the UV editor, change the margin to four and click bait. Wait a while, and it's done. Always remember to save your textures. If it looks like it turned out how you want, go through your cow and remove all the materials that you baked. Create a new material, call it something appropriate, just connect an image texture to its base color, and select your cow texture from the drop-down list. Add this material to all the objects, and it's looking adorable! Let's add some slight details. Select the eyes, change the bottom area to the image editor, switch this menu to paint. Click the mode menu, and change to texture paint. In the tool tab over here, we have our brush settings. You can change the size of your brush with F. If you're unable to paint your object, usually the normals are inside out. Tab into edit mode, select all with A. Hit Alt N to bring up the normals menu. Choose recalculate outside. Shift N is also the shortcut for recalculating outside without having to access a menu. Now we can paint on our eye. Under the tool settings, you can adjust a bunch of parameters. For the eyes, I'm just gonna use the default brush and get it the right size and just click a couple times till it looks right, try to line them up. You could also lay the UVs over each other and use the same texture for each eye if you wanted to. Now let's add the nostrils. 
Go into object mode, select the body object, and go back into texture paint. Hit this little circle arrow thing to switch black to the active color. We can paint on the model in the viewport and directly on the texture in the image editor if we have paint enabled here. I think for this occasion, I want to change my brush fall off so that there's no color blending. Choose this square one and try some nose placements out. Remember Ctrl Z for undo. You can also sample colors to use with this eyedropper. I tried out a couple places, put them wherever you want. And this is looking good to me. Whenever you make changes to your textures, remember to save. So here's our little adorable cow, all textured. I'm gonna make it a place to stand and quickly show you how I set up my turntable renders so you can proudly display your own creations in a similar manner. Right now, I'm just gonna add a placeholder plane to act as my ground. I wanna show how to create a material with minimal effort. Go into the shader editor, create a new material, add some nodes, play around with it, add textures if you want. You can make a stylized grass texture by mixing a procedural and a real grass texture together. I found it kind of gives it a cool look, but I'm not gonna do that this time. Feel free to just adjust this to your heart's content. Have fun with it. Messing around with the notes is pretty satisfying. I think that's good. Maybe make the copper material more reflective. Hit numpad zero to enter the active camera's view. Depending on your navigation setting and preference, I prefer walk. I've set my keybind to control shift F. In object mode, select your camera either in the outliner or by clicking the edge of the camera view in the viewport. And with control shift F or whatever you prefer to use as a keybind, you can now manually position your camera in the scene with WASD, Q and E and your mouse. Shift makes you move faster and alt slows you down. You also now have a camera tab where you can change all sorts of things. I'm gonna set my camera to orthographic in honor of Harvest Moon 64. In the render properties tab, you can look at all the different light sample settings for your render. Higher samples means a better quality render, but it'll take longer. Here's all the light path settings. I think mine are default, but I'm not sure. In the output properties, you can set your video and image resolution, where you render to, your animation frame length and frame rate, as well as file format. To render, you click the little render tab up here and choose animation or image. I usually render my animations out as PNG sequences with transparency and then merge them together in Blender's video editor. At that point, I'll render it out as an MP4. Under render properties, you can choose to use either your GPU or CPU to render from. I usually don't have very complex scenes, so I use my GPU. If you're unable to select yours here, go into the Preference menu and enable it under the Systems menu. You can render off your CPU otherwise. It'll generally be a bit slower, but it's less likely to stall out if you want to render 10 million blades of grass. Also, you can change your render engine here. Cycles is a ray tracing engine, so it emulates how real light works. EV is a real-time engine, so it's faster, but less accurate. You'll need to set up your render properties and lighting differently depending on your engine. I'm going to use Cycles. Let's delete this plane and make a little stand for the cow. Use a circle, extrude, and add edge loops to get the shape you want. I'm going to create an orangey brown material with low roughness and assign the grass color to the top. If we want to easily have our camera rotate around our scene, add an empty with Shift A, choose Plane Axis. Select your camera and then Shift Select your empty. Hit Control P and choose Object. You can also parent quickly in the outliner by selecting the camera, holding shift, and dragging it over the empty object. Now if you go into camera view, select the empty, and rotate it on the Z axis, you can see the camera rotates around your object. Go into the timeline, with the empty selected, hit I and choose rotation. Move to a frame later on the timeline, rotate the empty by 360 degrees on the Z axis, hit I and assign rotation. I want my spin to be the same speed for its duration. So in the timeline, hit A to select all the keyframes and hit T to change the interpolation to linear. Move the endpoint to frame 95, and make the animation end on 94, then it's just a looping turntable. And there we have it. Hopefully you learned a thing or two. Thanks for joining me on our Blender beginner tutorials. Hopefully between the Minecraft cow and this Harvest Moon cow, you've learned enough to start trying your hand with other tutorials. If you're still feeling uncertain, I suggest checking out our Tom Nook tutorials. If you want something a bit more advanced, try making Kakashi. Don't forget to subscribe. If you'd leave a like on the video, it'd help us a ton. Thanks again. Stay safe. I love you all.